The time of being silent is long past over. Welcome to Porch Light, a place to chat, share testimonies, encourage and inspire one another. Only found on Firefall Talk Radio. Paul says, praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul wanted to speak boldly. The time of being silent is long past over. I'm not saying you should be critical. I'm not saying you should be a rabble rouser and cause trouble and dissension, but I'm saying you need to speak up. First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, but the Holy Spirit explicitly, explicitly I'm sorry, I'm, all of a sudden the Spirit has hit me. I'm a little riled up. The Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in the latter times, some will turn away from the faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, he's specifically talking about apostasy there, but I believe that can cover the gamut of where we are right now. There's a large part of what's called the church and I mean that with the religious implications, who don't like what I teach, who don't want people to be spirit-filled and empowered to pull down strongholds, cast out demons, get people saved, healed, and delivered. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And I'm not just talking about the gifts of the Spirit. I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. I'm talking about what the Book of Acts Church did. If you listen to them, it died. It's dead. Well, it's true. They're dead. They're in a religious institution. If you don't get riled up spiritually in your inner man or woman, if you don't groan in the Spirit like the Lord did about what you're seeing and hearing regarding our youth, regarding babies in the womb, regarding... A sin and debauchery and depravity and corruption and injustice. If you don't respond to that in some way, something's not right. We have a large part of what we call the church. I did the little finger of things. Church that is so far away from him and the word of God, they don't even know they're lost. Remember a long time ago, I talked about that one degree off course, that by the time you get to where you're going, you're miles and miles off course. Many of them are miles and miles off course, and they don't even know it. They are ineffectual. I'm calling you, if you're listening to me, if you're a part of this community, if you're Uh, for whatever reason that you're here, maybe the Lord just brought you here. Maybe you just stumbled onto this podcast. I'm calling you to wake up, throw some wood on the fire, get some Holy Spirit oil from heaven on the fire. It's getting darker and darker every day, that deep darkness I talk about. You need to shine. Don't get so caught up in all the extreme views or in prophecy or eschatology or all those other things that you're so far away from getting people saved, healed, and delivered, you're completely useless to him. He doesn't need eggheads. He doesn't need any more students. You don't need any more knowledge. Oh, you need to know the word. You need to understand the word, but you do that through the Holy Spirit. What you need is more of him. Holman Bible Publishers, uh, Holman Bible Dictionary says the English word apostasy is from the Greek word apostasia, means to stand away from. The Greek noun occurs twice in the New Testament, Acts 21.21, 21, 2 Thessalonians 2.3. The related noun means divorce. Large parts of his church, have divorced themselves from him. And that kind of apostasy in the later times, like where we are right now, involves doctrinal deception, moral insensitivity, and ethical departures from God's truth. And I will state unequivocally, it is demonically inspired and empowered. We were given all authority in heaven and earth. We were given the use of his name. 
We were given the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We were given the creative power of the universe inside of us through the Holy Spirit. We're given victory on Calvary. We were called to subject the enemy and hold him until the Lord came back. And instead, we're fighting to regain what we lost. We're fighting to regain land. We're fighting to regain ground and influence. Some people are fighting for their very lives. Some of your brothers and sisters are going to walk away from the faith. Now, we could say they were never born again. And that might be true. Well, they never got rooted and grounded in his love and they got washed away. But the fact is, if they walk away willingly, as some have done, Hebrews 6 verses 4 through 8, gets pretty clear about that. It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again, to repentance since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. For the earth, which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. I don't, I don't want to see that. I want to intercede for them. I want the Holy Spirit to say, hey, pray for this person. They're on the verge of walking away. They've been so deceived that they're getting ready to be tricked like the angels were, like Eve was, like humanity was in Genesis 6. Pray for them, intercede for them. When you stay plugged into him, when you stay in harmony and union with him, no matter where you are in your walk, no matter how flawed you are, no matter what mistakes, if you stay humble and repentant, it's when your heart becomes hard. It's when you lose your way. It's when you start listening to the world. It's when you start getting caught up in the things of the world and the accolades of people. I'm tired of watching these people fall. I'm tired of watching people I know and have cared about who didn't want to hear what I had to say, choose to go back. Or they want to roll the dice. There is no end time. There is no antichrist. There are no demons. But I'm praying right now that he'll open your eyes and you'll see what this world will be like when the fallen and their demonic offspring are out of the pit and Satan is in control. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 through 4. Again, I'm not going to say knowledge is bad. It depends on why you're gathering knowledge. And you can run from this conference or to this YouTube video or there or that, and, and I used to do that. I became disgusted by it. Because while I was there to impart my knowledge about the demonic and about the fallen and all those other things, I was there to get people saved, healed, and delivered. I was there to restore people into right relationship with the Heavenly Father. And that really wasn't what they wanted. The people running, the people that at the end of it would line up to be prayed for and have hands laid on them. And the big name people I was speaking with all went out to dinner. Thankfully, my brother Larry was with me almost all those times to help me. But when, when this all pops off, what are you going to do? You're going to throw their books? You're going to throw their DVDs? Gotcha. No, that's not going to work. You better know the Word of God. You better know the Son of the living God. His Spirit better be inside of you. There are a lot of people that call themselves followers of Yeshua. That match 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 through 4 with their actions and their beliefs. Integrity and accountability seems to be lacking in today's church. People are building brands and businesses and not the kingdom of God. I could care less about that. I said that to Pastor Shelley the other day. I'm not here to build a brand. I'm not here to build a name. I'll never get rich from doing this, ever. Because even if it came in, I would give it away. I'm here to build his kingdom. I'm here to lift up his name. I'm here to set the captives free. I'm here to destroy the work of the enemy. I'm here to pull down strongholds and kick in doors and go rescue the lambs that have wandered away. 
I'm here to grab the lion by his chin and take that lamb alive and unharmed out of his mouth. I'm here to find the Goliaths of the spiritual realm and take them down. To stand in front of the gods and those that were once worshipped as gods and let them know who is God. I've challenged one or two. Said, how about your king and you against my king and mine? Let's see how it turns out. Can tell you how it turns out. They lose. Look at your children right now. They they're in the room with you. Has the enemy got a hold on them? Is the enemy teaching them the occult and witchcraft through the, what they see on television? Have they begun to doubt God loves them? Have they begun to doubt the word of God? And you better get serious. So you want to know why I care about this? You want to know why I'm so bold about this? Because I'm seeing things that bother me. I'm seeing children of people that claim to be believers getting caught up in the occult, watching a TV show like Supernatural, which finally went off the air, thinking that what they're being told is the truth. Oh, it's supernatural, all right. It's satanic. With the amount of demonic information out there now, turn on Netflix, turn on Hulu, turn on Amazon Prime, turn on any one of these streaming services, Disney. You're inundated with the supernatural. You're inundated with the occult. And your kids are being stolen left and right. Would you have known how to minister to me? Would your church have told you how to talk to me? Or would you have been a Bible thumper? Would you have got in my face and quoted scripture and told me I was going to hell? People did that. I've shared that in my testimony before. That while I was demon possessed and my wife was down in Tallahassee at Christian Heritage Church with Pastor Shelley, and I would go down to visit, she would get me to go to church very subtle. She knew I didn't want to. She knew I was dyed in the wool Roman Catholic, didn't want to go with a bunch of holy rollers. But she said, well, if you don't go, Jesse won't go. And Jesse was young at that time. And then when you leave, I'll have to deal with that. She, she was good, very subtle. So I went. But I said, if I'm going to go, I'm going to have some fun. I put on my white, my, my white shirt and tie, my black tie with my black military fatigue pants, my SWAT pants, put on black shoes, put on a motorcycle jacket, put a, a, a diamond in my ear, slicked my hair back and went to church. I figured if I'm going to go to this church, I'm going to have some fun with these people. And I went in and some people got in my face and they told me I was going to hell for abandoning my family. And then they would quote scripture. But what they didn't realize was the demons inside of me knew more scripture than they did. And I would tie them up in knots. And all they did was feed what was already in me. What got me saved was the unconditional love that I was shown by people, especially Pastor Shelley. Witchcraft, Satanism. Psychic this, astrology, seances, palm reading, all these things that are going on right now. They're sucking the life out of your children. They're stealing souls. They're stealing lives. They're ruining families. And all because, oh, that's nothing, Richard. They'll get over it. They'll grow out of it. No, they won't. You need to do something about it. Here's what I'm asking of you. I'm asking you to care. I'm asking you to stop turning a blind eye and paying attention and asking the Holy Spirit to show you the things that you need to pray about, things that you need to do to be able to sit down and talk to your children with the power of the Holy Spirit on your lips in the areas that they need to hear. See, my mother couldn't do that. My mother found the books on witchcraft. She found the books on astral projections. She threw them all out. So I went out and bought new books and hid them better. Years later, when I told her what I was really doing, that she was shocked. So I was a good boy. I was a good Catholic boy. I was a good Italian boy. I was also lost and going to hell, except for the fact that he made a way where there seemed to be no way just for me. I've been talking from the heart. I've been speaking from my soul. Hopefully, I'll wake somebody up right now, a mother, a father, a sister, or a brother. Somebody may not even have family members, but can see it in their nieces or nephews or the people that they're working with. And, 
and the Lord will show them, Lord, that you'll show them, that you'll give them a word that'll open their eyes, something that'll crack the, 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 the covering over the spirits, and they'll hear it. They'll feel that love that I felt. Right now, I pray in the name of Yeshua that his love gets stirred up inside of you like a raging fire that you'll be able to see people with love and with compassion, that you'll groan in your spirit. So I'm a Lazarus. He raised me from the dead. He called me out of the tomb. He set me free, and I've become a danger to the enemy. I'm calling for you to let the fire go. Let it burn inside of you. I'm not asking you about politics. I'm not asking you about any of the things that will take you away from the simplicity of the gospel. That, for God, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life because Yeshua came to destroy the work of the enemy. And Hasatan, you are the enemy. Your fallen are the enemy. The demonic offspring of the watchers are the enemy. But we sit at the right hand of God with Yeshua in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power. And we declare and we decree, we will not tolerate you anymore. We will not tolerate you stealing our sons and our daughters. We will not tolerate you doing what you're doing. In fact, we come to plunder your kingdom. We come to set the captives free. We come to let the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, and the dead be raised. Now, you have to decide. Yeah, I pray that I can say it, and I live it, and I believe it. But you have to decide for yourself, what are you going to do? Time to take a stand. And that stand starts with you. It starts in your life. It starts with how you feel about him. So I pray that you'll do that. I pray that you'll get the fire of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll dig your heels in and when having done all, to stand. <music>